What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Monday, May 13th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, 25 states sue EPA over unachievable power plant regulations. Who would have thunk on that one? Next up, new climate reality is passing New York by, among other things. Next up, there is not enough power for America's high-tech ambitions. We'll then move to U.S. Has, a House passes Representative John Curtis's bill to remove, quote, red tape around nuclear power. We love it. And then finally, out of our favorite organization, the IEA, low-cost solutions can give billions access to modern cooking by 2030, but the world is failing to deliver. This talk about ripe with irony here. Stu will then t- toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets on Friday and quickly talk about rig counts, which again, uh, uh, post a lower print, and, and then we'll let you guys get out of here and start your Monday. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off. Hey, let's get running around to our favorite Biden. Oh my goodness. 25 states sue EPA over unachievable power plant regulations. What, besides a few billion between friends, Michael, what's one of our other greatest lines? Uh, Sanctions don't work. (laughs) Legislation through regulatory action. I mean, you got to love the EPA continues to not fully understand the direction from the Supreme Court. Unelected bureaucrats continue their pursuit to legislate rather than rely on electric elected members of Congress for their guidance. West Virginia Attorney General Mormsey said, I love it. Here's another quote. The Green New Deal agenda the Biden administration continues to force onto the people is setting the plants to fail and therefore shudder, uh, uh, altering the nation's already stretched grid. The states, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and Wyoming. Wow. Any of those states, go move into right away. <laughs> yeah, th- th- that is exactly. I'm surprised Florida or Florida is on that list. I was going to say, I think we're missing one, but no, Florida is definitely on that list. This is a list of states you definitely want to move through. You also exactly. have to remember West Virginia has a history of this type of success in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. They successfully fought EPA rules in 2022, as the court said, the EPA should not use its regulatory authority to create broad new regulations with the Clean Air Act. So now they're taking a step further and trying to to move it in into the power plants. Um, we love it. I mean, it's oh, you like you said, legislation through regulation is 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 one of the most you know is a second order effect of having a large bureaucratic system that is absolutely unbelievable. It is terrible. And a a follow-up to this story, new climate reality is passing New York by. This is actually by a a very interesting cat. He is um, Roger Kazaria. I apologize for butchering your name. He's the pragmatic environmentalist of New York. And he's written about that act. Uh, 350, he's testified about all this and there's a couple interesting uh quotes in here that are pretty amazing in this article this article uh is is really good uh this is the citizen's guide to the climate act and i've got the link in the show notes uh here i follow uh, this is him speaking i followed the climate act since it was first proposed submitted comments and he's written over 350 articles about new york's net zero transition it wow. ain't gonna work. This cat is cool. I've already tried to reach out to him and and get him on the podcast, Michael. I'll let you know when that rolls around. It was established as net zero target, eighty five percent reduction and fifteen percent offset for emissions, include an interim of twenty thirty reduction and forty percent by twenty thirty. 
This is a wonderful resource follow up to that other article. Yeah, uh, this is a great article that I recommend everybody go on to and hit the show notes uh, in the description below to find this link. I mean, who, who would have thought New York's making great bad decisions with with their energy policy? Wouldn't you have know, thought that. But you know what? It's it's fiscally irresponsible of po political people, Germany and and California. Two of the the big, you know, we always talk about how they've done things wrong. <laughs> New York is right in there now. I Sorry. love this quote he's gotten here before we move on. This, the scoping plan that documents this claim by Segos has described it as, quote, a true masterpiece in how to hide what is important under an avalanche of words designed to make people never want to read it. That's a quote. Wow. <laughs> Usually what I like to do is just you, you. You know, you can you can baffle somebody with brilliance. You can bury them in words. That's right. Uh, that sounds like a never mind. OK, um, there's uh, let's go to the next article. There's not enough power for America's high tech ambitions. I love this one. This one, I believe, is from the Wall Street Journal. And when you take a look at this, the fastest uh, Miss Producer, if you could bring up the fastest growing data center hubs in the U.S., this Northern Virginia, 1,200, Atlanta is right at 700, Dallas is at 450, and Hillsboro is right up there in uh, Oregon. And when you sit back and take a look, AI is driving the places nuts mm -hmm. with data centers. Um, unbelievable when you sit back and take a look in the, the amount of electricity, we have not seen this in a generation, said Arne Olson, a senior partner at a consulting firm at Energy and Environmental Economics as an industry. We've almost forgotten how to deal with load growth of this magnitude. People are forgetting. And here's the thing. Everybody's all in on AI. Until they get to pay for the bill. Yeah, what I can't quite figure out is why Atlanta and Hillsboro, Oregon make this list. Seems to be you're too far away from source. You're, you know, I, I get why Northern Virginia and DFW. Northern Virginia, well, you know, right. maybe does the federal government ring a bell to you guys? But also your access to cheap, cheap gas, source gas from the Marcellus. DFW makes sense. You're close to the Barnett close to mid-continent. You're also close to um, some of the stuff, the, the gas coming out of the Eagle Fork. But Atlanta and Oregon, I, that is or interesting to me. Uh, Oregon is big tech, and big tech plate gets put into places where they don't care or they don't think. I was going to say, they must... I, I get that there's big tech in Oregon, and I haven't really actually ever thought of Oregon as big tech, but I, I find that you're going to have you're going to be contending with higher cost energy which is probably one of the largest categories and expenses for a data center i would assume right it, it wasn't that way in the past it is now mm. well then it'll be very interesting they are they're 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 blowing up in atlanta right now which is which is super interesting but right. this comes back to the point where electricity demand in these areas and as we move to a you know, I think people have said, oh, we're already in a high-tech economy. We'll just wait till AI starts rolling out. It's oh. going to become a lot more crazy. Toby Rice loves this article. Um, and, you know, I, I saw, you know, a photo a couple days ago of, of Virginia and where all the data centers are tapped around it. I mean, it's yeah. no coincidence. It, it, there's no coincidence that a lot of these data centers popped up in Northern Virginia prior to a lot of the, uh, prior to what is now considered the energy boom. I'll just throw that out. Did it look like a poo map in California or did it look like a high school kid's face with zits? Uh, a kind of a combination of both. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Let's go to the House passes Representative John Curtis bill to remove red tape around nuclear power. Michael, I love me some nuclear and I the only way that we're going to get through low cost energy is the elimination of regulatory legislation through regulation and Curtis, a Republican and founder of the conservative 
Climate Caucus has been a proponent of nuclear power. Quote, the cost and red tape associated with our permitting processes are providing to be duplicative and ineffective, Curtis said Thursday. We need an innovation in nuclear space to ensure affordable, reliable, and clean energy, and Congress must do the same. I am excited about this. In fact, I want to let you know that Congressman... Uh, Congresswoman Spatz uh, and I are uh, looking to interview on Wednesday, 1030 Eastern. I'm pretty excited about that. She is a uh, congresswoman. Uh, she's actually uh, Ukrainian born uh, and has got a lot of great things to say. I want to reach out to him and get him on the podcast as well, too. Are you, so, are you guys live from the border? Live from the border. No, we're actually going to go live on LinkedIn. But no, I'm just I'm just giving you a hard time. But no, I mean, this has come up multiple, multiple times. If if you really want to transition and you really want to find something to replace coal as a baseload energy power, nuclear is the only way to go. It really Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Gotta love me some nuclear, baby. And and, and you gotta give old Doug Sandridge a, a shout out. Oil executives that love it. Hey, I've got one last story here, Michael. Low cost solutions. You found this one and you brought this up right before the show. Got to give uh, Michael Tanner a shout out. Low cost solutions, uh, you know, the, you know, for our podcast listeners, both of us are bowing. I have to bow to Michael. I don't like telling anybody that I bow to Michael every before the show. Good morning, almighty one. Uh, low cost solutions can give billions to access modern cooking by 2030, but the world is failing to deliver. Michael, when you brought this one forward and said, we got to have this, A, it hits all of my hot buttons, It's but it's from the IEA, and they're saying they need what, Michael? They need natural gas. I mean, re, you overview the article here. What are they talking to us about? <laughs> Women and children bear the brunt of harm from lack of clean cooking, which can be solved with modest investment, bringing major benefits from health and development and gender equality and climate. But they don't talk about it until later on. Clean cooking is a key topic for Faith, Faith Bristol Braille and a cornerstone, blah, blah, blah. And then they come in here and then they finally get down to it. 300 million need to gain access to clean material. And then they bury it in there and said, oh, it's liquid petroleum gas. So here we go. So what does this report say? Nearly one in three people around the world still cook their meals over open fires or on basic stoves, resulting in significant damage to health, living standards, and gender equality. And I agree with that because who's doing the majority of cooking in the third world countries? It is women. And yet this challenge can be overcome this decade through a relatively modest amount of investment, according to this new report by the IEA, produced in partnership with the African Development bank group there are over 2.3 billion people that currently rely on charcoal wood fire or coal and agricultural waste and get this animal poo as a result right. to fuel to prepare meals causing them to bring harmful smoke in the process air pollution from these rudimentary cookings blah 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 3.7 million basically what they they they, they produce this report called the vision for clean cooking access for all, which access which offers a practical guide to bring the tools and fuels needed for every household worldwide to have access to clean cooking by 2030. You know, they mention tools and fuels, but they don't they they bury it as you said. You gotta go all the way down until they finally say, what we need to do is get people on canisters of liquid petroleum natural gas. So the IEA is now saying in order to cut carbon emissions, we need to move to natural gas. Did you call this three years ago? It, yes. And I think I love um, uh, uh, propane for the last mile. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got to be better to be transported than in, in the uh, horrific uh, Pakistan where they were uh, hauling uh, kids. Remember you and I talked about it last year. Mm -hmm. Kids were hauling natural gas in plastic bags. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you got to set the infrastructure up for propane for the last mile. Natural gas is great. LNG is great. But let's put in pipelines. Let's yep. put it in and let's make the infrastructure cheap. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for letting me rant. And you did great finding this, by the way. Oh, by the way, my wife and I would not do very well in a third world country because her timer would not work in a hut. It's the smoke detector. 
<laughs> that's when that's when you know it's done. Well, we'll <laughs> oh, we're sorry, Lisa. She 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 was just cooking a little while ago. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and jump over to finance, guys. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. As always, the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. The uh, Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Check out the show notes in the description below for links to all the articles, timestamps, um, and all other links um, to access our stuff. You can check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, and all of the subsequent links there. Uh, it's going to be a quick, a short episode from or, or segment for me, Stu. I mean, really, we've only got... Um, a rig counts and oil prices, you know, overall markets on Friday, though, I did pop a little bit. You got to go up about a quarter percentage point, both on the S&P and NASDAQ. Um, Two year yields up one percentage points. Ten year yields was a little below one percentage point. So uh, good to see the the front term economy seems to shaping up a little bit. Dollar index up about point um a dollar index up about a tenth of a percentage point. Bitcoin up about 1.3 percentage points, uh, $61,000 after after uh, dumping a little bit. Crude oil, though, didn't have a great day. It's down 1.26 percentage points, 78.26 as the market is about to open here as we record this Sunday afternoon. Uh, Brent oil down a little bit above one percentage points, $83. Even natural gas actually down two percentage points, $2.22, you know, Really, with 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 the you know week with with uh, really what kind of drove prices um, and and drove this this lower sentiment for oil was the fact that you know we did see some comments out of the uh, uh, out of the Federal Reserve and 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 a few of their central bank officials saying that we probably are going to have higher interest rates for longer, which kind of cuts the speculation of what the market was hoping for, which was a few rate cuts coming. We probably won't see that um what this has to be transitory yeah just transitory um (laughs) you know the the thinking is this is going to continue to hinder um um hinder any sort of oil demand group we also did see that uh oil speculators cut u.s crude net longs which is actually super interesting so maybe things are turning slightly bullish here um you can see that window being set and you know you know, uh, we'll, we'll do a quick uh, moment of silence um, for Jim Simons, um, the the legendary hedge fund manager at 86 in charge of Renaissance Technology, who who passed away on Thursday. It will, you know, of all of the quotes and all the videos you saw uh, floating around there, he 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 said, you know, hey, commodities, you watch the trend and you can find the trend in commodities and you can ride it and. Clearly, that trend of settling between 75 and 85, which we pounded here on this show, you can see as we get closer to that $75 level, you see the shorts begin to, to, to be taken off, longs come in, um, and, uh, and, 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 and all the rest of the stuff. So it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see. Um, we, did see we did see some you know um, net longs get taken off. So it's going to be very interesting. Again, a lot of what we've seen surrounding where oil prices has a lot to do um with um the geopolitical risk that we're seeing and i think you know as whether or not it's being settled or not the sentiment around the geopolitical risk has softened a little bit so i think you're seeing uh, a pullback on prices there and the real question is is 75 that floor or are we going to see it um or are we going to see it continue to fall it'll be interesting to see um that um that quote actually came out of Lori Logan, who's the Dallas Federal Reserve president. Um, she said that, you know, she basically her quote was, we're not sure if monetary policy is tight enough to bring inflation down to their central bank's goal of 2%. So what does that mean? Rates stay the same or rates go up. Um, that was backed up by Atlanta Fed president uh, Rafael Bostic, um, even though he thought inflation was likely to slow under current monetary policy. Um you know, it may only you may only see a quarter percent drop. So super interesting there. The other thing we saw on Friday was rig counts, and again, rig counts continue to fall, guys. We we dropped two rigs last week, um, down to six oh three. If we can go ahead and throw that image up, um, right there, we're still down one hundred and twenty eight rigs from last year. Canada saw uh, four rigs drop internationally, though we did see seven rigs get picked up. So 
you know, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a swing and a miss here. And I was, I was sure at the beginning of the year, we were going to see rig counts continue, you know, kind of turn around and climb. We've kind of seen a, a falling of rig counts really in the last uh, three to six months. I was for, you know, w- with prices being sort sort of sustained at this $75 level that that's enough to make a lot of oil prospects, um, profitable and so or and and when I mean profitable, I mean make the economics of an individual project look okay, which is really interesting because what we ha- what we've seen is that capital that may have gotten poured into drilling is getting poured into M and A. People are more willing to go out and buy PDP than they are to go you know drill a new well. And so I've swung it missed the sentiment. I would have said we would have seen rigs a lot higher than they are now, and 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 it would be an interesting time uh, to go in and buy a bunch of non-op as we're going to see those AFE participations come out, but we really haven't. So I think the the it, it's clear now. Companies are going to either return money to shareholders in the in in, in the form of buybacks or dividends. Or they're going to use that and create mergers. And, and we've talked about all the different mergers. You can go check out the Deal Spotlight podcast that I have. Shameless plug if you want to learn about some of the interesting stuff that's gone on there. But it's 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 shareholder returns or mergers. It's really all that's happening right now. We the the the, the amount of rigs running is is what I would have thought is a lot less than what it maybe they should be. But again, it it it's it's the as Jim Simon said, the price is always right, whether or not we believe it or not. So super interesting. It's really all I've got, Stu. Uh, anything else? What, what should people be worried about this week? Well, uh, the solar storm was pretty interesting. Uh, I couldn't back up our website, which is twenty six gigs. Uh, you know, uh, it's because of the solar data problem. So you know, everybody, buckle up, uh, hug your grid. Hug a lineman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hug a lineman. Now we got to throw that on the T-shirt. Well, all right, guys. We'll go ahead and let you get out of here. Start your Monday. Appreciate everybody's checking us out. World's greatest website. We are. Uh, we're going to be at Super Doug for Heart. Isn't that uh, great? On Wednesday, Thursday. So Stu will probably rock a solo show Wednesday, um, and then uh, you'll hear us in the. Uh, you, you, so if you are around. Um, Super Doug in Fort Worth, come out, come over and find us. We're going to be helping a, a client out with with some live podcasts from there. So come over and find us. If you see us, give us a high five and 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 we'd love to talk shop. But um, other than that, guys, hope you have a great week. We'll be back in the chair tomorrow. Until next time, guys.